Two people have requested that I make a response to a video by Beyond the Science claiming that there is evidence that dinosaurs and humans coexisted at one point. Mikey brings up a lot of things and I'm gonna have to take some time to look up these specific examples. If I got anything wrong, feel free to correct me in the comment section below. When we think of dinosaurs and humans, we never associate them with each other because they supposedly belong to completely different time periods. In the beginning, he gives a little background to dinosaurs, so we're just gonna go ahead and skip that. And although many people believe that it's impossible for humans and dinosaurs to have coexisted, there has been clues from fossils, paintings, ancient sculptures, and more that tells a slightly different story, implying that humans did in fact interact with these ginormous lizards. Okay, I'm gonna be honest here. Mikey, you don't seem like a creationist to me. I don't think you're someone who believes God created the universe 6,000 years ago and that dinosaurs and humans coexisted. That's for Ken Ham to believe. I think you're doing this for entertainment purposes, but I'm still going to go ahead and respond to you because you could easily be helping to promote creationist propaganda here. I know this is a super controversial topic, but it's also really interesting. So here are some clues for the coexistence of humans and dinosaurs. Hear it out and make your own decision. This isn't really a controversial topic. It's either dinosaurs coexisted with humans or they didn't. In this case, dinosaurs obviously didn't, but a certain group of people keep telling us they did. This is sort of like climate change. No matter how much evidence there is, there will always be people who deny man-made climate change. And when these people get loud, some people might actually consider that side as if it has equal weight. Now, the idea that dinosaurs coexisted with humans obviously hasn't gotten to that stage yet, but you get the point. One of these clues was found in May of 2012 when the brow horn of a triceratops was excavated in Dowson County, Montana that was dated to around 33,500 years ago. The dating method used was carbon dating, and creationists who are ignorant about how carbon dating works don't understand that you can't use the dating method for fossils over 50,000 years old. And this is actually pretty hilarious. This was indirectly done by creationists using their pestering and bribes, which is quite hypocritical. Creationists always try to disprove dating methods, including carbon dating. Oh, but carbon dating now is accurate once it supports your worldview? How convenient. In addition, this has yet to disprove all other dinosaur fossils that have been dated to millions and millions of years ago. You can't cherry pick. But now back to the original topic. How did we get 30,000 years for a dinosaur horn? Well, the answer is obvious. We used carbon dating, that's why. Mike, you said in your video that carbon dating is accurate only to about 54,000 years. You guys won't get to see that since I'm cutting it out, but the point is that you can't date items that are too old. You won't get zero C14. No, there are other ways in which C14 can be produced and contaminate our samples. The older the samples, the same amount of contamination causes greater inaccuracies. For example, contamination of a younger sample may only be a few hundred years, but the same amount of contamination for older samples can go up to a few thousand years. I won't explain the science behind that right now since it's a little complicated, but the idea is that Due to this contamination, we won't get ages of infinity when we use carbon dating. So when we actually try to date fossils that are too old, we get wild numbers. We can get numbers up to 60,000 years. We can get numbers down to 30,000. It depends. And later on, Mikey brings up a point which further adds to my argument. Carbon-14 was never used to test dinosaur bones in the past because, like I mentioned, it's only reliable up to 55,000 years. But that's only because scientists thought that it was useless to test bones that belonged to creatures that became extinct 65 million years ago. It is not only useless but can be detrimental. It gives us wild results, ones that we know for certain can't be used. If dating something older than 50,000 years gave us a result of infinity, then that wouldn't be a problem. However, that's not the case. It gives us random numbers that creationists can then come to hijack to further their propaganda, and that's exactly what happened here. Like I said earlier, Mikey, you don't look like a creationist to me, so I don't think you're doing this on purpose, but the entire story of this dinosaur horn was hijacked. Because of this, methods such as radiometric dating of volcanic layers is typically used to test dinosaur bones, which yielded results that were more based on assumption. Okay man, you're really stretching this. The dating methods used are typically ones that date the rocks around the fossils. For example, potassium argon and argon argon dating. Now what I would like to hear from you is, what assumptions are we making when using these dating methods? You can't just claim they have assumptions without giving any examples. It's so silly when people think that scientists haven't thought of all these stupidly obvious things that they point out. Like, who the fuck do you think these scientists are? If there's a dating method that had extremely wild assumptions, you think we would still use it? Honestly, these people think they know more than scientists who dedicate their entire lives to this research. In addition, yes, there are some errors in dating methods, but there are only a few percentages. There's no way a dating method we use would be so inaccurate that we got a few million years wrong and it's actually only a few thousand years old. It became clear years ago that paleontologists were not just neglecting to test dinosaur bones for C14 content, but were refusing to. 
Ah, <sighs> yeah, but they're not refusing to just because they want to hide the actual age of the fossils. They're refusing to because they know that it'll be a completely inaccurate result and that creationists would come and try to use it as evidence of a young Earth. Plus, it's a waste of time and resource. After the Triceratops brow horn sample was sent to the University of Georgia for C14 testing, it was divided at the lab into two fractions. One fraction yielded an age of 33,570 plus or minus 120 years, and the other an age of 41,010 plus or minus 220 years. This is the part that I said would back up my point earlier. Carbon dating for extremely old fossils will yield wild results, and they are generally not consistent. You date one part to be 33,000 years and another part to be 41,000 years years. Now if the uncertainty value overlapped then that would be fine and the fossil would indeed be that young. However, these two values are nowhere near each other and carbon dating is actually an extremely accurate dating method. So how can a method so accurate yield results that are completely different? Oh I know, because the fossil is actually millions of years old. Another discovery came in the form of soft tissue found in dinosaur fossils in March of 2005. According to paleontologist Mary Schwitzer, the soft tissue was discovered inside a 68 million year old T-Rex leg bone from Montana. Okay, well I already covered this topic in another video, so I'm just gonna summarize it here for you motherfuckers who haven't watched my channel for that long. Creationists completely hijacked the research project. Basically, iron is an atom that animals use in their body for certain electron transports. It is normally embedded into a protein to reduce its toxicity but still have its effect active but regulated. Upon death, depending on the situation, a lot of iron is released. Now, iron has a preservative effect that causes proteins to coil around it and thus put it into a more stable form to resist more damage. When collagen proteins, which is responsible for tissue connection, is preserved, it can make it appear as if there is soft tissue when there really isn't. It's preserved tissue. And that's what happened here. This process is enhanced by the iron-rich blood of dinosaurs as well as the proper conditions upon death. So now that that's out of the way, please don't bring up this soft tissue nonsense again. What's more, a small ceratopsian dinosaur that lived approximately 70 million years ago was actually carved by the Hongshan culture, a Neolithic culture in northeastern China. The carving was made out of jade and looks exactly like a Montano ceratops. No, not really. Here we have an example of mistaking something to resemble something else, when in fact it's just by pure chance. There's an estimate of up to a thousand genera of dinosaurs. Out of these, there's definitely going to be at least one carving that somewhat resembles one of these dinosaurs. In addition, look at some other carvings. The Hongshan people were especially known for their pig dragons which depicted a pig head and an elongated body coiled around to look like a fetus. So tell me, by your logic, did humans coexist with pig dragons too? In addition, Marco Polo also recorded that he saw a 50-foot reptile in 1100 AD with quote jaws large enough to swallow a man and a tail so heavy it left a trail in the sand as if a heavy beam had been dragged across. There are so many different types of supposed evidence that humans coexisted with dinosaurs. Unfortunately, if you hear anything like that, then it's not real. People go so far to try to cherry pick any evidence available in an attempt to say that humans and dinosaurs coexisted. Unfortunately, they can all be debunked. Here's the passage that Marco Polo wrote in his book that caught so many people's attention. I'm not going to read it to you now, so feel free to pause the video if you want to read it yourself. Firstly, Marco's description could easily fit with the description of many large lizards, such as the Komodo dragon. It is more reasonable to say that he saw one of those lizards instead of an actual dragon. Second, his stories weren't even first-hand and instead were most likely relaying stories that the locals told him, and during that time the locals likely made up a lot of myths and monsters to go along with it. Third, even if they were definitely describing a dragon, you can't take stories or anecdotes as evidence for something like this, especially not for something that could completely change our scientific understanding of natural history. There are many more examples of humans and dinosaurs coexisting from the Ica stones that were carved around 1500s in Peru that show images of dinosaurs. Oh, the Ica stones? The stones that depicted dinosaurs, spaceships, and surgery? The ones that were revealed to be hoaxes? The guy who faked them even told us how he did it. He was a farmer who faked the stones using a dentist drill. I won't go through the whole story on how this became a thing, but if you guys want to know, simply type in Ica stones into Wikipedia. It tells you all about it to the Indian arrowheads found in the late 1800s that were mixed together with iguanodons, duck-billed dinosaurs, ichthyosaurs, and plesiosaurs fossils. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I couldn't find a single source saying what he claimed about the arrowheads. So if any of you want to tell me about it or send me a link, please do so. I would love to read about it. And that's the end of the video. This was fun to make and I hope you guys had fun watching. The thing about this Beyond Science channel is that they have so much influence in their hands. They have so many subscribers, so when you say this kind of shit, people will believe you. 
and they will think there's legitimate evidence that dinosaurs coexisted with humans when that's simply not the case. That's why I felt obligated to make this video. Anyway, feel free to give me your opinions on this matter, and with that, I'm out. Peace.